powerful song. Love that song. I'd like to invite you to turn to John, if you would. John, the first chapter. We're going to look at um, verses uh, 10 through 18. John chapter 1. Verse 10. He was in the world, and though the world was made through him, the world did not recognize him. He came to that which was his own, but his own did not receive him. Yet to all who did receive him, to those who believed in his name, he gave the right to become the children of God, children born not of natural descent, nor of human decision, or a husband's will, born, but born of God. The, world, uh, became, the Word became flesh and made His dwelling among us. We have seen His glory, the glory of the one and only Son, who came from the Father, full of grace and truth. John testified concerning Him. He cried out, saying, This is the one I spoke about when I said, he who comes after me has surpassed me because he was before me. Out of his fullness we have all received grace in place of grace given already given. For the law was given through Moses, grace and truth came through Jesus Christ. No one has ever seen God but the one and only Son, who is himself God and is in close relationship with the Father, has made him known. Father, thank you so very much uh, for your blessings. We've already heard throughout this service about that light, and that light coming in darkness. As we study more about it, we just pray that you would open up our, our minds so that we can accept it and we realize, Father, that you have blessed us to have a relationship with that true light. Yes, that true light. Thank you. Thank you so very much, and we come before you in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. For the last few weeks, we have talked about Jesus, our Savior, coming into the world. Yes. Three weeks ago, we talked about John the Baptist introducing him into the world as the Messiah, bringing his message. Two weeks ago, we talked about Mary giving birth to Jesus, and him physically being born into the world. He was greeted into the world with wonder and great amazement by the shepherds, by the magi, and by the host of heaven. Yeah. Last week, uh, we saw how uh, we are to praise him, yes. and him only, who is the actual creator of all the universe, and all that is. Mm -hmm. We are to praise him for who he is yeah. and for what he has done. Amen. He has done many things Amen. in our lives. Thank you, Lord. Today, we find in John chapter 1, verse 9, that he, this very Jesus, is the true light, light uh, that gives light to everyone, yeah. has come into this world. Let's look at verse 9 of chapter 1 of John. It says, the true life that gives life to everyone was coming into the world. Yeah. Can you imagine that? That the true life, true light, mm -hmm. the true light of all has come into this world? Mm -hmm. That God the Father has seen fit to send the true light into this corrupt world. That's what the world needs. Nothing else will solve the problem. Amen. Take a look at verses 10 through 13. He was in the world, and though the world was made through him, the world did not recognize him. He came to that which was his own, but his own did not receive him. Yes. Yet to all who did receive him, to those who believed in his name, he gave the right to become children of God, children born 
not of natural descent, nor of human decision, or of human will, but born of God. This true light, this very Jesus, came into the very, this very corrupt world, born of the Virgin Mother Mary, and though uh, this physical world was created by him, that's what Genesis 1 says, doesn't it? This physical world was created by him. Genesis 1. John 1 verse 3 says, Through him all things were made. Without him nothing was made that has been made. Still, this world did not recognize him. And today, people do not recognize this divine creator. People don't rec recognize him because, one, they don't want to believe him and obey him. Yes. Two, they want to live their lives just as they want to live them. Yes. Three, they haven't been introduced to him in the right way. Thank you for Samaritan's Purse. We're having a, a place in at least introducing him. How can they hear unless, how can they know unless they've heard? How can they know unless they have been introduced? So that's a reason that people have not accepted this light. Those are reasons. They don't want to believe him and obey him. They want to live their lives just the way they want to live them. And there are many people like that. My, my dad was one who understood scripture. He, he really did. But he wanted to live his way. I mean, there's no doubt about it. Whatever he wanted to do. That's what he was determined to do. Verse 11 says, He came to that which was his own, but his own did not receive him. John the Baptist, Jesus' forerunner, introduced him uh, to the Jewish race, and only a handful accepted him. Yeah. The vast majority rejected him. They wanted, remember, they wanted Barabbas, a known criminal, yeah. set free, and Jesus, who had known no sin, crucified. Yeah. They wanted him killed. So the representative people that he came to deliver from their sin and ungodliness rejected him and wanted to kill him. And yet, there were a few who did receive him. They took to heart his message on, of salvation. They received him, repented of their evil and worldly ways, and accepted the way of life that he prescribed and they followed him. So, what were the results? Revelation 2.7 says, whoever has ears, let them hear what the Spirit says to the churches. To the one who is victorious, I will give the right to eat from the tree of life which is in the paradise of God. Yeah. Hallelujah. Yeah. <laughs> to the one who is victorious, I will give the right to eat of the tree of life, which is in the paradise of God. Yeah. Revelation 2 verse 7 says that. Yeah. It says, to those who believe in his name, he gave the right to become the children of God. Not children born of, natu of a natural father and mother, naturally, nor of human decision. You know, like a couple of unwed people just deciding to get together and have a child. Nor of a husband in a marriage telling his wife, well, it's time for us to start our family, so we're going to have some kids. No, we, we're talking about those who have received him, that true life, 
who have believed in his name have become the children of God. Children of God? What do you mean, the children of God? Well, that was what Nicodemus was trying to understand. We're in John chapter 1. Go to John chapter 3, starting in verse 1. It says, now there was a Pharisee, a man named Nicodemus, who was a member of the Jewish ruling council. He came to Jesus at night and said, Rabbi, we know that you are a teacher who has come from God. For no one could perform the signs that you are doing if God were not with him. Jesus replied, verily, truly, I tell you, no one can see the kingdom of God unless they are born again, yes. born of God, born again. Verse 4, how can someone be born uh, when he is, when they are old? Nicodemus asked, surely they cannot enter a second time into their mother's womb and be born. Logical question, right? <laughs> but I understand. How are you going to be born again? Jesus answered, very truly, I tell you, no one can enter the kingdom of God unless they are born with water, born of water and the spirit. Flesh gives birth to flesh. The spirit gives birth to spirit. You shall not be surprised by my saying, you must be born again. The wind blows wherever it pleases. You hear its sound, but you cannot tell where it comes from or where it is going. So it is with everyone born of the Spirit. I kind of like the way Living uh, Bible uh, uh, translate verse 8. The Living Bible says in verse 8, just as you can hear the wind, you can't tell where it comes from or where it will uh, go next. So it is with the Spirit. You don't know on uh, whom he will next bestow this life from heaven. Those who believe in his name, Jesus' name, accepting him are reborn spiritually. This new birth, born again or born from above, changes us from the inside out, rearranging our attitudes, our desires and motives. Being born of physical parents make us physically alive, right? Mm -hmm. And places us in our parents' family. Yes. That's what verse 13 says about being born of God. We are then a part of God's family. Yes. That's born again. Mm -hmm. Born of God's born of the Spirit. Verse 15, back in John 1. John testified concerning him. He cried out saying, uh, this is the one I spoke about when I said, he who comes after me has surpassed me because he was before me. Okay, this is reflected in verses six through eight of this chapter. There was a man sent from God whose name was John. He came as a witness to testify concerning that light so that through him all might believe. He himself was not the light. He came only as a witness to the light. Verses 16 and 17. Out of his fullness, we're talking about this light. Out of his fullness, we have all received grace in place of grace already given. For the law was given through Moses. Grace and truth came through Jesus Christ. The strict law came through Moses. It was the law of God, but it was a strict law. It was either you do it, or you die. But grace and truth came through Christ. Yes. 
qualities of God, the Father. But this, but out of his fullness, out of his completeness, out of his abundance, we have received grace in place of grace already given. Other references say grace on top of grace. Or we could say relentless grace. On top of the grace already given when we became born of God. You get that concept? Born of God. We receive grace. But this light gives us grace. What is this? Grace in place of grace. Out of the fullness of Christ available to us when we became born of God, we have received his grace and we have everything we need. We are complete. Turn with me, if you would, to Ephesians 1. Ephesians 1, verses 22 and 23. Ephesians 1, 22. And God placed all things under his feet and appointed him to be head over everything for the church which is his body, the fullness of him who fulfills everything in every way. Jesus provides everything we need through his mercy, his grace, and his truth. Everything has been placed under his authority, and God has appointed him to be head over everything for the church, his body. The fullness of him who fills everything in every way. So whenever the church, so whatever the church needs, whatever you or I need, brethren, Christ will provide it. It's like the soup. It's in there. Was that camel soup? Anyway. It's in there, whatever we need. The church should be the full expression of God the Father through Christ. Christ is the head, and we are the body, and the body does whatever the head wants it to do, right? Yeah. Ephesians 1, let's look at Ephesians 3, verse 16. Ephesians 3, verse 16. I pray that out of his glorious riches, he may strengthen you with power through his spirit in your inner being, so that Christ may dwell in your hearts through faith. Um, and I pray that you being rooted and established in love may have power together with all the Lord's holy people to grasp how wide and long and high and deep is the love of Christ, verse 19. And to know this love that surpasses knowledge, that you may be filled to the measure of the fullness of God. He wants us to be totally filled. He wants us to be totally filled with whatever we need. Brethren, we can't do anymore. Are you frustrated with trying to do and do and do and do? We have to be patient with ourselves. We have to let go and let God. We have to do our best, trust God in faith to help us do what we can't do. He's faithful. He knows we are flesh, and he has promised to help us, yes. even in our weakness. As verse 19 says, that you may be filled to the measure of all the fullness of God. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. 
the mature body of the church. That's what he wants. Everything snugly fitting together. The unity of the church. You know, that's the thing that I've been trying to, uh, to get across lately. We are frustrated. Things are tough and tight. From a health standpoint, from a political standpoint, from a racial standpoint, Satan has charge. He's pulling us from every direction. Yeah. And that's what he wants. Mm -hmm. He wants to yank on us and he wants to pull on us. Yeah. But, you know, we can get frustrated, but we just have to let go and let him. He knows what our desires are and what we want. He wants a mature body of the church, everything snugly fitting together, the unity of the church. And he's telling you, I'm the true light. I will help you be there. I will help you get there. Let's read verse 16, John 1. Out of his fullness, we have all received grace in place of grace already given. Now, brethren, uh, this verse really got my attention. Out of his fullness, out of his flesh, which became the word of God, out of his fullness, we have received grace in place of grace already given. Yeah. Living Bible says we have all benefited from the rich blessings he has brought us. Yeah. Blessings upon blessings heaped upon us. Yeah. Amen. So grace in place of grace already given. Grace upon grace already given, grace for grace, an increasing measure of grace. Hey, y'all, you got the grace. I'm there to give you more. I'm there to give you more. I, I, I said this years ago. I told you this little joke about grace and mercy. You remember that? No, y'all don't remember that. It was probably three years, four years ago. Anyway, there was this, this pastor. See, I'm learning some preacher jokes. Anyway, that was this pastor. And he had given a pretty good sermon that day on Sunday evening. So he and his wife and two children piled into the car. He says, I tell you what, we're going out for dinner today. Oh, I feel good. So anyway, they take off and they go down this little country road to this place where they're going to have dinner. And so all of a sudden he looked in his rearview mirror and he saw these, these flashing lights behind him. So he pulls over and the officer gets out of the car and walks up and says, uh, well, hello, Pastor. You know, it's, it's a small community. Everybody knows everybody. Hello, Pastor. You know you were going 40 in a 25 mile an hour zone. Oh, he said, no, I didn't realize that. And she says, we were on our way to dinner. Uh, we had a good service today. And so I just didn't realize I was speeding. Well, you know, the officer says, well, you were. Uh, he says, but uh, this time I'm, I'm just going to give you a warning. Uh, so that was grace. That was grace. I mean, I mean, that was, that was mercy. That was mercy. He didn't get what he should have gotten. You broke the law. I'm not going to penalize you. That's mercy. But then on top of that, he reached in his wallet, his pocket, pulled out $50. He says, have dinner on me. That's grace. That's undeserved pardon. 
undeserved, just sometimes blessings just fall outside and deserve that. Amen. Mm -hmm. Mercy and grace. Mm -hmm. Mercy, you did it. Yes. I'm not going to punish you. Grace, I'm going to heap what you don't deserve. Yes. Lost, lost my place here. You know, uh, the incarnated word Jesus is full of grace and truth. And we have received his fullness. Each blessing, each blessing or grace becomes a means of receiving a new, fresh, increasing blessing from his abundance, from his plentitude, out of his fullness, we are all supplied his inexhaustible storehouse. And that's the way it's been with me and some of you. Sometimes we don't realize why God is just so gracious Amen. to us and bless us Amen. in spite of our shortcomings. Thank you, Lord. Talking to Mr. Washington on several occasions, he says, God has just been good to me. Amen. <laughs> I don't know why, but that's mercy on top of mercy. Thank you, Lord. We've been forgiven for our sins, and we have, you know, a, what it says, uh, uh, to eat from the tree of life. Yeah. But he continues to bless us. Thank you. It's humbling to see how God is using me sometimes. I feel sometimes that I don't even deserve it, but he keeps blessing. Grace upon Amen. grace. An increasing measure of grace. Why? Because he's there to support and provide for his church whatever it needs. Amen. I want to share with you a song uh, and it's really one of uh, one of my favorites. It's probably the last. It's a Christmas song, and it's probably the last time you hear a Christmas song before next Christmas. But anyway, it, it's just a beautiful song, and uh, it, it it gives rise to this true light that we're talking. You've probably heard the song. It's a song by, it's one of the Gaither songs. Let's listen to this song. That's the light we're talking about. That's the true light. When he was born, when he was introduced, when he was introduced into this world, that's when things got better. That's the true life I've been talking about. He's available to all of us. Yes. Let's just use him. Yes. And remember what I said. Let's not beat up on ourselves. Mm -hmm. I'm not saying that we slack off and that we drop the ball and that we just go back to our ways that we used to do. You know, those uh, skeletons that are hanging in our closets, we resurrect those, no. But we do what we can do, and then we go to God in faith Amen. and ask that he will help us. Because the night that Christ was born was a part of God's plan. And from that time on, things, it was better for all of mankind. That true light is coming to the world, and now it's time for us to transition into communion. Um, he is coming to his own. He came unto his own, but his own received him not. Yes. Yet to all who did receive him, to those who believe in his name, mm -hmm. he gave the right to become the children of God. Yes. And that's who we are. Amen. The symbols of communion, the bread and the wine, that we receive in his name and we will continue to receive them 
until he returns. Let me ask a blessing over the symbols. And as you take the symbols, you can pick them up, come back to your seats, and at your leisure, eat the bread, eat the wine. Realize they represent this true light. Yeah. Father, as we come before you, we yes. just thank you very much for your, your, your plan of salvation. Father, redemption was the goal yes. of your plan of salvation. And now we're going to partake in the communion, the bread and the wine, which commemorates Jesus, his life, what he did. And then he decided that he would die. In fact, that was decided from the beginning of the world, the foundation of the world, that he would die, Father, so that we who are imperfect might be able to be a part of your very family, which was what you wanted in the very beginning. We ask your blessings upon the bread. We ask your blessings upon the wine. And Father, you said that we should commemorate this particular time until Christ returns. Thank you so very much. Thank you for your word of truth. Yeah. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen.